Bro, let's get these dads in. Do you know how bad those energy drinks are for you? What's up guys, my name's Josh. And I'm Kyle. And we're Colossus Fitness, and today we're gonna be diving into one of the most controversial topics out there. Josh, do you know how much caffeine is in one of those monster energy drinks? Like 140 milligrams. Did you know that is way too much for you on a daily basis, Joshua? Fun fact, these barely have any caffeine compared to most things. So for those of you who don't know, caffeine consumption up until 400 milligrams is actually okay unless you have one of these symptoms. Some people can have allergic or serious skin reactions to chat. Insomnia, nervousness, restlessness, irritability, stomach upset, fast heartbeat, or muscle tremors. You left yourself open, Dad. All right, so this is Burke's study. Uh, this is an earlier 2004 study, but it's still regarded highly. So basically what she came out is to prove their benefits. So first, as you can see, she notes how there was enhanced muscle glycogen resynthesis by up to 66% in the four hour period of well-trained subjects. Clear proof that it is in fact an ergogenic aid mentally and physically at a rate of around two to three milligrams per kilogram, which is about your normal dose for your average adult. You don't wanna go too high over, you're gonna have those negative effects and they're gonna impact your sleep, your stress levels, etc. No! Oh no! Hmm? Oh yes! Most energy drinks usually contain around 80 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. There are exceptions in either direction, but here we can show you guys a profile of all your favorite energy drinks and their different levels of caffeine. The first super popular energy drink I would say is Red Bull. First you can see they're boasting about caffeine. Now one 250 milliliter can has about 80 milligrams of caffeine, which is about the same as your average cup of coffee. Now coming over to Monster, uh, they contain 92 milligrams of caffeine per eight ounce serving. Usually it's about a 16 ounce serving. Then they compare this is a Starbucks short latte, cappuccino, or macchiato, which we usually have around 75 to 90 milligrams of caffeine. Now, for your blonde roast at Starbucks, most of us would order this. If you go for the venti, you are going to have 475 milligrams of caffeine. But Starbucks is okay. I swear, like, everyone drinks that all the time. So fun fact, a lot of these people saying you're having too much caffeine are probably too caffeinated themselves. So that is copious amounts of caffeine, and if you guys remember our earlier standard, that is way more than your daily standard in one cup. All right, Kyle, so clearly you have no problems with me drinking this now. All right, you know what? I don't care about the caffeine take intake. Do you know how many darn chemicals are in that thing? No, God, please, no, 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 no! Yes, I do know about the chemicals, Kyle. Ginseng is the first one. You'll see it on a lot of cans, and that is any one of the 11 growing plants in Asia, a perennial plant, and it actually, right now, is considered one of the best herbal remedies. So this is another herbal ingredient that is one of these so-called chemicals. In fact, some studies have noted it to help with stress, cholesterol, and diabetes. However, keep in mind, a lot of these have not been backed up, and right now they are merely claims. All right, so the energy drink in my hand contains vitamin B3, B6, B12, and it actually contains 100% of your daily intake. Could you argue that that's too much? Maybe so, but it's gonna be easily flushed out in your urine. So why do they contain vitamin Bs in this energy drink? It's supposed to give you energy, however it's not proven, and if it is, it would be a very small amount. But I can't eat it because then I'll get fat. But it's so good. All right, next chemical is your boy sugar. Now sugar in Western culture gets blamed as the enemy. Now what you guys gotta keep in mind is sugar is a natural substance and it will occur in a lot of your foods. Processed sugar, however, is something you should avoid. However, in moderation is also okay. And now, these cans are pretty dense in this processed sugar, like I said, which you wanna avoid. So a lot of them will have 50 grams plus, which is crazy, but like that, it's just like a can of Coke. Okay, so it's not horrible, but what we would recommend is to go sugar free. Aspartamine? I've read about that. That gives you cancer, my friend. What do you wanna say, Michael? Woof! All right, aspartame, the beast, the monster. This guy has been hyped up lately and people are giving it so much hate, saying it's the chemical, the worst, gonna give you cancer, all these things. So what is it? Basically, it's a fake sugar. It's a sugar substitute. The European Food Safety Authority actually did a study on this to see if it actually was negative for you. Save you guys a lot of the time and detail. They concluded that it is okay for everyone. 
Now, keep in mind this is gonna include children. This is gonna include pregnant women, so you are okay. But now, to debunk this whole cancer argument, how did that get started and why? There was a 2005 study conducted, a very old study, I'll put that down below too, and basically what they did was they gave copious amounts of caffeine to rats. They gave the equivalent of eight to 2,083 cans of Diet Coke for a human Dang. a day. And they found with that that there was increased development of tumors in some cancer cells. Well, now, course. Kyle, are you prepared to drink 2,000 monsters a day? Absolutely not. All right, guys, so the next chemical we have is taurine. So this is the best amino acid related to athletic performance and metabolism increase. So this little guy is actually good for you. So there's another chemical that's debunked, so Monster Energy drinks, once again, are looking good. All right, so the next one we're analyzing is green tea. Now this is found in a lot of Monster Energy drinks. It is natural, um, you can find it from actual green tea leaves. It has very small amounts of caffeine, and it is also proven to have cancer fighting antioxidants so the research is shaky but this might help slim you lower blood pressure and act as a slight diuretic right, so next off we got Guyana you can't drink a country moron <laughs> all right so next off we got Guarana this actually comes from South America from the Guarana plant so what does this do it's just another caffeine additive it just has twice the density as as the coffee bean so it's very dense in caffeine per its weight so the next one we're gonna look at is the green coffee extract. So this comes from unroasted coffee beans and provides you guys caffeine. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is Jinko Balaba. Now this comes from a Chinese Jinko tree and it's something that may fight fatigue and improve memory. The last one we got l carnitine Now you guys have probably heard this before if you're into fitness, if you're subscribed to us, I sure hope you are. If you aren't, get on that. But this one in particular helps with fat loss. This assists in transferring trigonalicides into mitochondria. I probably butchered that word, but basically what it does is it helps transfer long chain fatty acids. So now you guys might be wondering, well, what about the carbonated water, citric acid, uh, sodium citrate? Well, we're not gonna go into that. Basic everyday additives and preservatives as you would find in pop, as you would find in many juices. You're gonna find this everywhere. So you're telling me everything we ha we drink or eat has chemicals in it? Pretty much. Everything does have chemicals. If you guys take mm. a toxicity class, like I've always said, you'll learn that it's actually not that bad. Our air is toxic, our water is toxic. You're going to get it everywhere. There's preservatives in all our food, GMOs as you know. So with that being said, do we recommend you chug these every day? No. Do we recommend you drink 10 at once? No. Do we think it's okay to have these from time to time? Absolutely. Our whole point and the reason we didn't go into the food colorings, the dyes, the flavor additives, is you're going to find that in pretty much everything in life. So we wanted to dive into this, debunk the argument that the energy drink by itself is the biggest demon. It's a horrible thing for you. Too much caffeine, too many chemicals. Thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you learned a thing, share it with a friend so we can get this out to more people who think energy drinks are killing you. Like we mentioned before, we're going to tell you don't drink 10 of them. Um, but if you see someone drinking one in moderation, don't be like, hey man, put that down, you stupid idiot, for and drinking energy drink. Now you can send that drink. person this video link and you can end this debate once and for all. Um, if someone can you know, show us a chemical or show us some research that will argue basically what we said, we'd love to see it. We're open-minded. Thank you guys for watching once again. Love you all. Peace. Okay. No, there's really no lighting. All right, Sarah. My name's Grace. Should people subscribe to Colossus Fitness? Yeah. Say it. Call me Haymaker.